Science with Folly. Kia ora. Welcome to Science with Folly. Today we're learning about energy changes. Two key points to start off with. Breaking bonds absorb energy. See, when I try to pull apart this hydrogen molecule here, I have to input energy, and so it absorbs energy from me. Whereas if these two hydrogen floating around, making bonds releases energy. Another key word you need to know is this word enthalpy, and that refers to the energy within a chemical system. Now looking at energy changes and chemical reactions, we've got two kinds of chemical reactions we need to know about. Exothermic reactions, they release heat energy, and that's because the energy absorbed in breaking the bonds is less than the energy released in making the bonds. It's like lighting a match. A little bit of energy is needed to get the reaction going, but now it releases more energy than it's absorbing. The other kind of reaction is an endothermic reaction. That means it absorbs heat energy. The energy absorbed in breaking bonds is more than the energy released in making bonds. So overall, energy is absorbed in the system. A bit like heating up water. You have to add energy to make it boil. And there's two diagrams you have to be familiar with. The diagrams for an exothermic reaction and the diagram for an endothermic reaction. You can see in the exothermic reaction that the reactants have more energy than the products, and that is because energy is released. Whereas in the endothermic reaction, the reactants have less energy than the products, and that means energy is absorbed. And when we think of energy changes, the bonds involved can be covalent bonds, ionic bonds, or the weak intermolecular forces that hold molecular compounds together, such as water and other substances. As you can see, when a solid melts, it turns into a liquid, and that's an endothermic reaction because it requires an energy input. But when it freezes, it's giving off energy, so that's an exothermic reaction. Same thing, liquid to a gas, or gas to a liquid, or sublimation in both ways. So now let's look at bond enthalpy, and that's the energy needed to break the covalent bonds of a molecule. For example, if I've got a hydrogen molecule, there's one H to H bond, and that has a bond enthalpy of 435 kilojoules per mole. If I have an OH, the OH bond has 465 kilojoules per mole. And when I look at an entire molecule, such as H2O water, you can see there are two O to H bonds. Each O to H bond has a bond enthalpy value of 465, so I times them by two, and that gives me 930 kilojoules per mole for the whole molecule. And now we're up to the fun stuff. This is where we're looking at energy changes for a whole chemical equation. So I've got methane plus oxygen gives us water plus carbon dioxide. If we look at methane, here's my methane molecule, it's got four C to H bonds, and oxygen, in this case, has got one O to O double bond, but because we've got two oxygens, we end up with two of those. Water, as we all know, where's my water molecule? Lost my water molecule. But as you know, we've got four O to H bonds and CO2, two C to O double bonds. So now we can calculate all the bond enthalpies. We add up the four C to H's, four times 414 gives us 1656. Two times O to O gives us two times 498, 996. Add them together, 2652. On this side of the equation, the bonds that are formed, four of those total 1860, two of those total 1600, and the total is 3,460. Just quickly, in case you're wondering where I got these bond enthalpies from, you'll always get yourself a table which states the bond enthalpies. So, if I look at this, the total energy to break the bonds is 2,652 kilojoules per mole. The total energy to make these bonds released is 3,460 kilojoules per mole. So, we take, we get the energy that is used and the energy that is released, we take them away, and as we can see, we get negative 808 kilojoules per mole. And that tells us 
that this is exothermic because more energy is released in making the bonds than is used up or absorbed in breaking the bonds. One thing to notice, negative values always tell us that a reaction is exothermic and positive values always tell us that a reaction is endothermic. That was a fair bit to learn today. You might need to go back and rewatch some of that. But hey, hope you learned something. Kaki Tano, see you soon. Science with folly. Science with folly.